Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about monitoring or ping monitoring your gateway with PFSense and how the logging works for that and what you should be setting in those particular options. And well, just kind of an expanded view of that because it's a pretty important feature, not just if you have a single gateway, but even more so important if you have multiple gateways and you want to either load balance or have a failover group. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. Now we're going to start here at the documentation. A gateway is a system which PFSense software can reach the internet through another network, so if multiple WANs are in use or multiple paths to the internet via different gateways, the associated gateways must be defined. Gateways must also be defined for networks reachable via static routes. So what we're going to do is to show you exactly how to modify the settings, see the default settings, and when or when you do not need to modify those settings. So when editing a gateway, the following settings may be defined, interface, address, family, name, uh, no spaces, no special characters, etc. And I'll leave a link to this so you can go through here. Now this is a couple of things we're going to do is talk about, and there's beyond the scope of this, but they do have a link and I do have videos on this and we'll be doing some updated ones soon on load balancing. We're not going to get deep into that, but I will mention that this is all in that same location as that information. And we're going to go look at my firewall directly. And this right here is my home firewall. And the default for the gateway monitoring is going to be the default WAN DHCP address. That's just how PFSense grabs it by default. So if you have it set to DHCP, it's going to grab the whatever gateway was handed to as an address. If you have a static IP address that you're assigning or even a bulk of IP addresses, the gateway still becomes the default IP you monitor. Now, you may or may not want that. And the reason why is it kind of depends on how you're being provisioned internet. So let's say we have a scenario where we have two different ISPs coming in. One's providing us, and we have a client with this exact scenario, one has fiber, the backup is cable. The fiber block has a block of IPs, and the first gateway happens to be the box that they essentially provided that's provisioning the fiber. So the fiber comes in, goes to the box, the gateway is there. That means if the fiber line is cut, the gateway still pings. So it doesn't know to fail over to the cable modem that is their secondary internet connection. That is a instance where you want to update, and we're going to show you how to modify what you're pinging for the IP address. And what happens in those scenarios, and another scenario you may see, is some of the LTE devices or different provision devices that provide backup internet may not allow for assigning the WAN, a public IP address, in the gateway. So the gateway is the LTE device, same instance. If the LTE device goes down in terms of its connectivity, you don't want it to ping the LTE device. You want to ping at least one hop past that LTE device that may be providing internet. So if you have a cellular backup instance like that or a fiber backup where it's on site and you're monitoring that local IP, that doesn't really tell you that anything went down. And it doesn't usually ever have any packet loss unless there's something wrong with the physical layer between that connection to that box and the PFSense, which it's just a rare scenario. It's just not something that happens. So in those scenarios, you want to go one more hop out, whatever that next hop is going to be, so you can find a steady connection and say, all right, that's what I want to monitor. Now, I've seen people say, well, can't you just use like Cloudflare DNS because it responds to ping or Google DNS because it responds to ping? Yes, you can. The problem is that doesn't necessarily always tell you that the gateway's down. And I say that because if there's something goes on with that particular IP address and it goes down, it will give you bad information and tell you that the gateway's down. If there's latency getting to only that particular DNS because they have an outage, or really any IP address you put into ping, I just use those as examples because they do respond to ping requests. Anything that you put in to respond to ping requests, you're really only checking the latency and connectivity to that particular IP. So it may or may not be the right scenario that you're looking for in terms of monitoring it. So generally you go within the network that is providing the internet, and you'll go one hop in, or in, in the case if the hop is local to you, one more hop, so second hop. All right, let's talk about the settings and actually what it looks like. So as I said, I'm assigned a public IP address via my 
cable internet service provider, and I just have it set to DHCP. I don't have static IP at home. Don't need it. And then the gateway is 69.14.60.1. And good news is they do support ICMP, so I can ping them and they do respond because that's another important thing. It's rare, but I mean, I'm not gonna say it's never happened where you find some providers not providing proper IC, IS, ICMP replies. Uh, so that is obviously a kind of a prerequisite here. So let's go here and we can see that WAN, address family, name, WAN, DHCP, gateways dynamic because it's all you know, set up that way. Now we can disable this. We can just turn off gateway monitoring if we want. Uh, we can disable gateway monitoring action. And if it was in a gateway group, and I've, you can refer to uh, how to set up like a load balance group or a failover group, um, that would be another way that you could say, well, I don't want this monitor action to have an effect on that. But now let's go down here and we have advanced turned on. Now the default latency low and high thresholds, I have the latency thresholds set to 100 and 500 because to me, and I was having some kind of unusual issues, that's why I adjusted it down. You don't always want and maybe if you're using a satellite connection, you'll have to actually adjust these higher because those are generally higher latency connections, but you don't always want it to throw an error every time a ping goes over 100. But because of a particular problem I was trying to trace, I found it really odd and I was having issues with my particular internet connection, which is kind of what brought about this video is some of the tracing I was doing on this. Now, the other thing I have set is by default, it has to lose up to 10 packets to be declared that it has reached a packet loss threshold. So three is alarm, 10 is member down or complete loss. And the same thing with here, at a latency that exceeds 100, that's alarm. A latency that exceeds 500, I consider, well, that's the default, that is what I consider loss. And now if this was in a gateway group, I only have a single provider at home, but if it was in the gateway group, these are the triggers that you're setting uh, to one, log it, and two, to determine that you should be pushing data over the other gateway in the, in the event that you have these set up to like a failover group. These are those thresholds you're setting. And then they also have how often should I, ICMP Pro be set? Defaults is 500, loss interval time. I leave the rest at uh, the defaults. And for the most part, you can probably always leave in with defaults with a few exceptions. Um, and one of the things that's really important to remember is latency is a really thing, really interesting thing you have to think about because you may have no problems at all with that 200 setting for latency. And generally speaking, you're not, unless you're doing a lot of voice. If you're doing a lot of voice traffic, well, that can be a problem. Or maybe in my case, we're playing games and we can figure out why we're getting high latency. And there's nothing more rage inducing than high latency causing problems in the game and that online game not working the way you want. So we did some monitoring. Now, what does that look like? Well, we go over here and we're gonna go over to system logs and then the gateway. And you can see some of the dates that I had these issues. Now, I was experienced a little bit of packet loss here and there. So I had 12% here, 12% here, um, and a couple different days. It turns out just resetting the modem made all of these problems go away, uh, but they were just kind of random for a couple days. So it happened on May 20th, May 24th, and then again on May 27th, which was just the other day. I reset it and it didn't happen again. I don't know, but this is one of those things there. You're contacting the cable company. They're always, you know, they just say to reset. It was usually their generic answer, but you probably want some logs as you want to be more definitive on how often it's happening. and. Also, this helps to determine whether or not it's your computer's connection on the network or is it the system itself. And this is a nice feature I like in PFSense, being able to monitor this and have this information. Now, the other thing you can do when I go to the front page on here is you can have the gateway monitor on there. And the nice thing is it's a quick way to grab and look and say, all right, this is what it's pinging. This is what its current uh, loss is. And you can get the idea really quickly in status online. Now, when you adjust those settings, it'll give you that status because the status could be like packet loss or latency on there. But it's pretty straightforward to set this up. It's not hard to do. And I like that it creates these logs because then you have a little bit more definitive information. And years ago, I had used this to help determine a really strange issue uh, that the people from my cable provider were really, uh, they were interested because I had, had logged it for so long that every day between roughly two and three, clock, I was getting consistent packet loss on an absolute daily basis. Am I using this to see that it just happened exactly at the same time um, every day with a couple exceptions? Uh, they would have that problem. Well, it didn't happen on days that were cloudy, as it turned out. So I was cor correlating this with weather data, and it turns out um, they had a box that was overheating, and when the sun was hitting it at the right angle between houses is their theory because they had to replace an entire 
circuit, essentially. Uh, they assume it was just overheating and it would just drop for, it was dropping for like 10 and 15, 20 minutes at a time always around two o'clock every day it was when the sun was hitting it, but on cloudy days, it didn't overheat. And this was in the summer and this was going on for a week and it was a really puzzling problem for them. But having this set up is, it's pretty straightforward to set up. It's easy to tune and you have to tune it based on your use case. And uh, it's, you know, having logs is everything. I know there's plenty of other tools to monitor gateways and uh, link monitoring and ping plotting and things like that. But it's nice that this is built into PFSense. It's a nice quick look when you're trying to solve a latency issue or that. And it's also something that you may want to think about fine tuning because uh, we've had people trying to figure out why they didn't fail over. And I'm like, because you're pinging the default gateway and you're like, yeah, that's what I should do. I'm like, no, the default gateway is that fiber box in your rack. Uh, when someone cut the fiber line in a basement, it didn't it, it just, it's not pinging out any further. So it didn't instantly fail over to your backup connection because of that. So we had to put it one hop out. So there's, you know, edge case scenarios where you do have to make some modifications to it. I just wanted to raise some awareness and kind of do an explainer of how that works. I will be doing some future videos though, related to load balancing and how that works because same, Thing, you want to push connections to whatever connection has the lowest latency. And that is something you can do by adjusting the settings like they say in the documentation. That'll be a future video and goes beyond the scope of this particular talk. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.